Hey everyone, welcome to a, another video from the Para Bros. Today we're going to be fitting the front mount intercooler. We're going to show you how to take it from this, which is the stock current fitment that comes on all 225s, to this. The large front mount intercooler, removing the old one, fitting the new one, and everything in between. So, before we get stuck in, let's jump into the intro, and then we'll get started. Right, so front mount intercooler. First thing we're going to need to do is get the wheels off and then get this front bumper off. Now, if you don't know how to do this, um, I'll put a card up in the corner here uh, on our video on how to remove the front bumper. Watch that first, then jump back into this and we'll get the front mount cooler done. So I'm just going to quickly get the wheels off, get the front bumper off, and then I'll come back to you and we'll get stuck in. Okay, everyone, so now we're in a position that we have removed the front bumper, exposing what we need to remove. So what we'll do, is basically, we, I'll, I'll talk you through what we're gonna do quickly with this, and then we'll go to what you need to remove, what you need to leave in, and then what we're gonna do from there. So, if you do stick around in this video, I'll also cover um, everything you're gonna need, all the pipe work, I'll also link it in the description below, just so you don't have to make a note of it while I'm uh, you're watching the video. But I'll cover everything you'll need, sizes, how many clips you'll need, um, what you need to remove, what you don't need to remove, what you need to keep in, etc. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is this front mount, is going to be mounted up behind here, behind the slam panel, and we're going to put a bolt, a um, couple of bolts through the slam panel to hold it on nice and tight. Um, so removing wise, we're going to need to remove this um, temperature sensor. We're also going to need to remove the, the shrouding ducts, both sides, and then we'll remove the cooler and the, the pipe work. Now, there is a support slash pipe work which goes between the two coolers, which I will show you a bit later on and a bit closer. But basically, that needs to be left in because it is a structural part because it sits between uh, both the front cross members to keep it nice and strong. So remove the piping work, as in the, the pipe work both sides, but we're actually leaving that in as a support afterwards. Um, but well, I'll show you that exactly in a minute so you can see it. So right, let's get stuck in to the removal part. Let me just grab some tools. Like I said earlier, we're going to be removing this shroud. Now, mine has got a little cable tie on it just because the actual... Um, clips are broken, but it is quite an easy removal. You simply just pull it. It has a little tab which you just push off up here, and then it will pull off. And my cable tie, just yank it off, and then it literally just pulls, slide pushes down from the bottom. Obviously, this one's a bit knackered anyway. Luckily, we're not reusing it. Um, so that is that removed. Now that then shows us the intercooler itself, which is here. Um, now that has a pipe uh, top and bottom and it also has a bracket holding it on now I'll show you the bracket a bit closer Right, so now it has come to remove the intercoolers uh, What you're gonna have to do is actually remove the headlight Because the bolt that holds the top of the intercooler on is actually underneath the headlight So we'll get the headlights removed um, And then we can get the intercooler removed from its current position Hunting support wise, I don't, I don't know if you can see through the past the dull line but basically there's a, a bolt up the back here where my finger is which is a 10 mil which you need to remove and then obviously you're going to need to remove that one. So once you've got the headlight out on the top is these two mounting points for the intercooler um, just be aware that they may snap or they may break or maybe hard to come out because obviously they go into the wheel arch which gets wet and is likely to uh, so rust now uh, this one snapped this one actually come undone um, you want to undo this pipe here which goes up to the charge pipe here this is all one pipe um, so get that removed and then it should just pull out the bottom okay so we're repeating the process on this side um, now again mine is broken but sometimes they have tabs and you just pull them off mine I've actually just slipped a little cable tie over the top just to keep them on but uh, just give them a tug and they fall off. Um, now, again, with the cooler, there's this side, there's a bolt just there where my finger is. And then again, there's two bolts on the top there. Okay, guys, so right now we're at the point where we've got both intercoolers off both sides. Um, what I wanted to just quickly tell you, you're going to have to remove um, this sensor. Now, mine was rusted out, so I drilled it out and managed to uh, heat it up enough that it just slid out. Um, but you're going to need to remove both horns, which is a 10mm, 
and on there and then it just pulls out of the the trim and then you can just remove it remove that um, pop all these cables out here take this out and get it all to one side hanging down um, also tip wise also have a cloth because when you do remove the intercooler pipes there's likely to be a little bit of oil residue especially if yours is a bit leggy like mine um, now that pipe is there um, I'll try and go underneath and get you a better view so basically what I was saying about a support so you can see there's a the mouth of the pipe and it's actually a support here um, and it goes from across both ends and bolts to the uh, the chassis legs up underneath there um, so that is worth keeping but it's obviously worth just uh, giving a quick clean out if there's any oil in it um, and so we're almost ready at mocking up so what I'll do is I'll get these uh, horns removed and the pipe work and then we will start mocking up and we'll go through what we need okay so now we've got the front mount intercooler mounted uh, now what I'll show you is how I've got it mounted so I've got it just just creeping over the top of the slam panel and basically what I've done is made a bracket which goes uh, bolts on underneath 90s upwards and then 90s and sits under here and then on the top I've done uh, sort of a Z shape and got it bolted through so this is actually threaded rod it goes straight through it's got a nut and bolt on both sides and basically squeezing it in which is pulling the cooler towards it as well as keeping it supported both top and bottom um, some people do just mount it on the top and then on the bottom they'll run a bracket um, from here backwards to this but this is it's only plastic so or composite so it's not particularly strong at least this way around um, it's pinched and it's held together um, quite firmly I mean you can see it's shaking the hell out of it it's solid um, and all I've done at the moment is just put the 90s on so these are the 76 mil to 63 mil reducing 90s or elbows um, same both sides as clearance is tight now you could do a 45 or you can do a 90 now I've, the, what I'm going to be doing today is 90s because the 45 comes and it sort of stays quite forwards quite a lot of the way which means you'd have to trim quite a bit of the bumper and obviously then you might lose the grill which I don't think looks great but um, so obviously I want this to be sort of a stealthy looking thing hence the reason I've gone for the black hoses um, rather than blue or red etc but yeah so this is mounted I mean clearance wise is very tight it's not actually touching um, so you won't get any rattles or anything but it is awfully close um, you can just about see so see there you go there's the floor so you can see it's not touching but it is close um, so that is the aircon right if you haven't got aircon um, you'll have a bit more space to play with but so this is a uh, this is where we're going from here so basically here we need to turn and go up through the hole and then uh, up and to the charge pipe which is there this about here um, but also remembering that there's a headlight there so um, I'll slide the headlight in and see what clearance we've got and then we'll go from there with what we're going to be doing um, and then this side this is the map pipe um, so there's your map sensor move the headlight plug out the way so yeah there's your your map sensor so we're keeping this map pipe and then we're going to be connecting onto this spout 19 down and then this will bring us into this area and we'll come into our pipe there now um, I'll have a little play around and work out what the best solution is and what size so I've got a couple of different um, so I've got a, a short 63 mil elbow and I've also got a big uh, map black one here which is twice as long so depending on what I feel is the best option obviously with the headlight and whatnot um, and then we'll get it mounted and we'll go from there so I'll have a quick fab up and then I'll come back to you once I've sort of sussed out my master plan and then we'll discuss trying to get the bumper back on because uh, that's going to be fun as well okay so here is a comparison of what you've removed versus what you've got installed now as you can see it's uh, quite a bit larger obviously there's quite a lot more cooling capacity for that and the pipe work yeah, is it's pretty similar to be fair um, pipe work wise on the passenger side um, I've come out with a, a 90 which was 76 to 63 into a, a 90 degree metal 
63-63 onto a 90-63 which goes straight into the uh, the map pipe there I trim the end down slightly um, so you'll get a normal 90 and then just take a little bit off you'll see when you put it in that it's too long um, so again you'll at 90 90 and then that's a short and 90 which goes on to the original plastic map pipe which I showed you earlier and then we come over to this side now I've used a 45 just because I had it and I found it better so I'm gonna say use a 45 um, because it's the same here um, for the uh, bumper cutout so you're gonna need to trim the bumper no matter what whether it's a 45 or a 90 I'll show you you see on both it sticks out both the same amount so um, it's not too bad so that's a 45 degree 76 to 63 then you've got a again a 63 90 going into another 90 which goes up and across underneath the headlight and then on the, the headlight side there's a, you can see there here this another metal 90 coming up into our 45 which goes on to the charge pipe now I've left a little bit of extra slack here because I'm fitting a track slag pipe so I just wanted to make sure that there was enough um, going on to it and I can always trim it down at a later date uh, but yeah so that is that fitted I'll, I'll write a list of what goes on what side and what pipe work I've used um, now I've marked the bumper because what I'm going to have to do is trim just on the inner edge of where the uh, the plastic grills push in on the bumper I'm just going to have to trim away some of the lower section just because otherwise it sort of pushes against this like this which is not really what you want um, so I'm going to trim that and then I will come back to you and I'll show you what I've removed and how it fits um, it's quite a snug fit and to be honest um, it's, it's sort of one of them you've got to trim it otherwise it will not fit 100% I don't think there's anything that you can just buy off the shelf in bits and bobs that's going to fit perfectly but with the uh, they do do a kit which I'll link up to in the description which is actually all the metal pipe work which is already sort of pre-welded in single positions which may fit without having to trim it but we will have to trim it just where um, this touches the bumper so we'll trim the bumper down hopefully the grills will still fit and then uh, then we'll just go on to pop in the horns and the temperature sensor back in and then we'll be complete there we have it guys that is everything complete um, we've got the front mount on we've got both horns relocated down onto the bracket where the um, inner cooler used to bolt to at the bottom on the passenger side and we've got the air temp sensor just cable tied on there nice and tight just so it's in the flow of air again um, as it was before all I've done is just cable tied up the excess cable here um, but apart from that everything is done so um, bumper trimming wise what I've done is let me just get you mounted and I'll grab me mic okay so what we've done is obviously the bumper still the same um, still looks exactly the same so basically behind it we've trimmed it it's probably better done like that so I've trimmed it um, here so you can see here inwards it's been cut to about halfway and that's basically been cut flush to allow the uh, intercooler pipe work to sit there now this, this side's had a bit of a repair so it's a bit you won't have all of this but um, you'll have all this still so basically I've just trimmed that flush all the way around and as you can see it's not seen on the front so that doesn't matter it doesn't affect the bumper in any way and um, the grill's still clicking as they should so that's not any bother it is solely just there you go so it looks as it should um, I'll get it mounted on so you can see it with the front mount and everything all fitted um, but yeah so a bit of a stealth front mount okay guys so that's it finished front mounts all fitted the bumpers fitted back on as it should be the lights are back in everything let's just take a quick wander around a bit close up so as you can see the pipe work is there all the grills fit on as they should what I like about the black is you can barely see the pipe work obviously you can see the cooler but that could be a radiator could be anything you don't know now if I'll give you back here look apart from in the middle where you see the intercooler which a bit of dirt I'm sure we'll cover that up soon you wouldn't even notice so I hope you found this helpful guys obviously in the description like I said I'll put everything 
um, that you need to know. I'll put all of what I've used. I'll also put a link up to one that's like a prefabricated one which I found on eBay. Um, I didn't actually purchase it myself because I like to do a bit of DIY but um, having done it myself if you're not really a big fan of having to make things work then that might be the one for you but I'll link it in the description along with all the pipe work that I've used today. Um, I've obviously stopped and started but generally speaking um, this has only taken me about two and a half hours um, from start to finish so it's not actually that bad a job. Um, providing you've got all the right bits like I said I'll give you a list of what I've used um, everything works fine like I said we've moved the horns everything so it's a proper job all back together um, I'm gonna take it for a little spin hopefully it'll be a little bit more responsive a little bit peppy but uh, but yeah I'll um, I'll put down in the comments how it is I mean I'll go for a bit of a drive um, and I'll do a little video in a couple of weeks time just with a few other mods that we're doing on the channel as well um, but yeah thanks for watching guys hope you found it helpful um, anything you've done differently or anything you'd like everyone else to know that maybe works better uh, feel free to hit it up in the comments it'd be great to hear from you um, i appreciate you watching take care guys bye now